The pandemic is wreaking havoc in Hollywood, where most movie studios have paused production indefinitely. The industry now faces its biggest financial crisis ever. Distributors are delaying the release of a would of would-be summer blockbusters. Last week, Disney postponed the debut of its live-action remake of Mulan for the fourth time. The sequels to Star Wars and Avatar were also pushed back by at least a year. And as COVID-19 cases continue to rise nationwide, the AMC movie theater chain says it does not plan to reopen locations until mid to late August. For more, let's bring in Axios media reporter Sarah Fisher. Sarah, thanks very much for joining us. Where was the movie industry just before the pandemic hit? And how much of a, a hit has Hollywood taken over the last couple of months? It's been devastating for the industry. I mean, the box office globally is going down. We know that theaters are also closed, not just in the United States, but in places like China, where there's heavy movie going. But the other problem here is that a lot of the movie studios don't even want to put their movies in the theaters because the theaters are at half capacity or because they're worried that people don't want to go. So overall, Hollywood is set to lose billions of dollars. It's going to be probably their worst year since the 1970s. And it's a shame because last year set a record for the highest global box office in history. Hollywood was doing pretty well. And now with this pandemic, it's basically shut off. Well, in April, Universal Pictures released the movie Trolls World Tour exclusively through on-demand streaming platforms. The film earned nearly $100 million in digital rentals in the first three weeks. Why aren't more movies following that example and releasing at home? Because the economics are terrible unless you're trolls and it's a pandemic and parents are stuck at home with their kids. Look, if you're Disney and you're spending a ton of money on a film like Mulan, you want that to go to theaters because at the end of the day, analysts think you'll make a, mil a billion dollars doing that. But is Disney going to make a billion dollars selling these uh, through streaming its streaming platform? No, no way. And so it really doesn't work out economically for the studios to totally abandon the theaters. You also have a creator problem. If you look at Tenet from Warner Brothers, which was also pushed back to after Labor Day, Christopher Nolan, the director, says he has to have his movie in theaters. A lot of old school Hollywood won't play ball with just putting things on streaming. So there's a lot of reasons why the movie studios aren't going to just send things right away to streaming. However, we are in a pandemic. Most studios uh, know that theaters are closed. And so they're trying to find creative solutions. So expect to see more you know, creative partnerships and deals between the theaters and the studios moving forward to address what to do now that people are home. So according to the Motion Picture Association, the American film industry supports two and a half million jobs. How are unions who support some of these unemployed workers trying to help? Yeah, well, a lot of people applied for small business loans, PPP loans, people that were unemployed filed for unemployment. I mean, the problem with a lot of people in Hollywood is they're freelancers. And so they're not going to be getting the same type of stimulus and relief as a full-time worker would if they were put out of a job. So what a lot of the unions are doing is they're asking lawmakers, hey, can you carve out some sort of an exception for our writers, our producers, our stuntmen, so that they can get some relief as well? Because the production in Hollywood is basically on hold right now. Well, let's talk about the small screen. Many TV shows release new seasons in the fall. How is the pandemic impacting that sector, too? Oof. It's going to be a rough fall season. First of all, we all know the biggest show in the fall is the NFL. And right now, right. it's kind of unclear what's going to happen with the NFL. Roger Goodell just said that they're canceling the preseason. Same thing with the MLB. We know that the Marlins have put all of their games on pause. So that's going to create a huge hole in programming. The other issue is scripted programming, all your favorite series. That takes a lot of in-person production to create. So expect to have a lot less of that this fall. And instead, the types of stuff that you can do are remote. There's going to be a huge uptick in animation, a huge uptick in news and documentaries. Hmm. Well, you write that Hollywood is expected to have its worst year at the box office since the 1970s. And a recent Washington Post piece says Hollywood can actually learn from the 70s by taking risks and thinking beyond blockbusters. It reads, quote, today, the corporate aversion to risk has resulted in a form of cultural amnesia. 
Hollywood is still matching interesting young artists with accessible material, see Black Panther, but less in the spirit of discovery than producing predictable, crushingly repetitive products for a global market. So, Sarah, do you think that Hollywood can use this time uh, during this pandemic to reinvent itself? I mean, it has no choice. Uh, quite frankly, that's the one thing it has to do if it wants to survive this. But let me get to what Anne Hornaday was writing about in the Washington Post. She makes an excellent point. If you were to take a look at the types of movies and even the types of TV shows that crushed it in, like, the 90s, it was all romantic comedies and dramas. Now that people have streaming in their homes, the only thing people want to watch on a big screen is, like, action and adventure. And so Hollywood is only producing right now action and adventure because that's what they think is going to get butts in right. seats. Now, the problem with that is it becomes redundant and consumers aren't going to go see a bunch of the same types of action movies over and over, leading Hollywood to be in sort of a creative rut. I think what Hollywood can learn from this pandemic is that you've got to come up with better business solutions so that your distribution isn't relying solely on theaters. And that's what they're doing. A lot of these studios are merging with big companies and launching streaming services so that they can put some of their content directly to streaming, and then they can invest in more diverse stuff. Right. That's going to be really interesting to see, Sarah, if there is sort of a bigger table now uh, for more diverse kind of perspectives and stories that are told uh, in Hollywood in the midst of this pandemic. Sarah Fisher for us. Sarah, thank you very much. Thank you so much.